Here's another review from Three Days and Trace Noches, and this time we're at the Breathless Riviera Resort and Spa in Cancun. And if you're watching this video, it probably means you're considering choosing this resort. So make sure you watch the entire video because we're gonna give you an honest review, but also information that we wish we had before booking this resort. And if you're new to our channel, Three Days and Trace Noches is not a travel vlog or a travel agency, so we're not trying to sell you anything. We just bring you real, honest, to the point, reviews and information about destinations that we've traveled to. So let's get right into it. Breathless Riviera Resort and Spa is located about 30 minutes from the Cancun airport. It's part of the AMR collection, so it includes like dreams, secrets, which is why we actually chose this because it's a group of resorts that we hadn't tried yet. And recently Hilton did buy this group of um, resorts. So my understanding is if you are a Hilton member, you can apply some type of membership benefits towards these resorts. We also wanted to review a more budget friendly resort. So one that got good reviews on TripAdvisor like this one, but was also more affordable for more of our viewers. And we did upgrade to the Exhale Club, so I'm going to give you all the information you need to know about that and whether or not you should upgrade to the Exhale Club at the end of this video. So let's start with transportation from the Cancun airport and definitely watch some of the other videos that we've done on tips for the Cancun airport, tips for Cancun, because when you do arrive to the Cancun airport, it can get a little chaotic. So the first recommendation that we always make is to make sure that you do set up that transportation before arriving to the Cancun airport. Because what happens when you arrive, you're bombarded by salespeople trying to sell you excursions and trips and also people trying to give you a taxi ride to your resort. And often they can double charge you um, if you're not prepared or don't know what the exchange rate is or what the cost is. So by setting up this transportation ahead of time, you know the cost, it won't change. And honestly, we always use Nacho Tours. We've been using him for years. We don't get anything for recommending him, but it's really the safest and most reliable transportation that we have found in Cancun. So I will drop all of his information below if you want to reach out to him to set up transportation. I honestly don't know if Breathless provides transportation from the airport. I'm assuming that they do because most resorts offer this at an extra cost. All you have to do is call ahead of time to set it up. However, even if the resort offers transportation from the airport for free, I still pay Nacho to take me to the resort. One is I want a private transfer. I don't want to share a ride with anybody or have to wait for anybody to arrive. But more importantly, I want a safe and reliable ride. And I know I'm going to get that with Nacho. I've been in other cars where it's not the case. And I also do a few other separate videos about Nacho and about transportation in Cancun, so check those out. So onto the resort and the check-in gets a 10 out of 10. In fact, this was the best check-in process that I've ever experienced at any resort I've ever been to. When we arrived, we were immediately greeted and everyone was very friendly and they took us straight to the check-in room, which again, we upgraded to the Exhale Club, so it was downstairs and they actually escorted us all the way downstairs. Now, when we got into the Exhale Club, I don't know if we just got lucky, but we were taken right away. So often I've had to wait, you know, sometimes 20, 30 minutes for a check-in, sometimes longer. And Shamir, uh, who checked us in, took us right away. And we were sitting at the desk, I wanna say maybe just 15 minutes. Sometimes we can sit there forever. And after that, we sat down with someone who did explain the resort credits, which I will go over later, but that was basically it. Our room was not ready, but we were then shown this great little private changing room, which I've never seen before at a resort. So we had our whole little private changing area where we could at least change and use the resort while we were waiting. We did have an issue with our Exhale Club upgrade. Um, so if you're thinking of upgrading, make sure you watch towards the end of the video. I'm gonna go over that. But they really handled it very quickly and we were impressed with how they handled it. However, we met some other people who did not have the same check-in experience that we did. And in fact, their rooms were not ready till like five or 5.30. And then there was issues with their rooms when they got there. So I don't know if we just got lucky, but either way, our experience was very, very good when it came to the check-in process. 
So now I'm gonna show you our room and I'm giving it an eight out of 10. And remember when I do these reviews, I'm basing it on the preferences that we like when we go on vacation and other experiences. You may think the room's a 10 out of 10. So that's why I walk you through everything that I liked about it and didn't like so much about it. And then you can come to your own conclusion. We were in the Exhale Club Oceanfront Junior Suite. So right when you walk in, you see that view. And then um, immediately inside is the bar area. So you do get this little martini bar with the Exhale Club. You get a little mini bar, and then you also get a fully stocked fridge. Um, the fridge you can restock daily, the mini bar you can restock daily, but the martini bar is once um, per stay. They also have the coffee machines. So the bathroom area had everything we love about a bathroom, which is double sinks. They had all the toiletries that you could basically want. I usually bring my own anyway, um, but they did have those. They had the hair dryer, not a flat iron, but they did have a hair dryer. They also did have a makeup mirror. Next is the separate toilet, which I always love too, because sometimes you wanna get ready while someone's using the bathroom. So they did have that separate toilet as well. I have to give the shower special attention because it was one of my favorite features in the room. So the first thing is it's huge. Well, it's a shower designed for two. You're at a couple's resort or breathless secrets resort. The second is the water pressure. So I know that sounds silly, but lots of times I see complaints at all inclusive resorts about the water pressure. Well, the water pressure was amazing. The temperature of the water, there was no issue with it but then it had double rainfall shower heads and I've never seen that feature before. And so I just thought that was really cool as well. The shower is all glass, but it does have this curtain feature if you wanna close it off while you're showering as well for privacy. So it did have a king size bed. It had that backdrop too. You could change the colors if you want. The bed wasn't too, too comfortable, um, but it was clean. And it did have a few drawers for you to put your items in. And then this seating area. If you are an Exhale Club member, they also give you this little beach bag um, with some towels in it that you can use too during your stay. And then we did have the oceanfront room. So it opened up to this little patio, which was really nice. And of course, a beautiful, beautiful view. Now this is an area of Cancun where they get a lot of seaweed. And so this is a bad time of year. We knew that going into it. It was actually a little bit worse than we thought. I'm gonna talk about the beach later, um, but at least it did not smell, which I've been to places where the seaweed is so bad it smells. Now you can see here, I'm waving to my neighbor. One of the issues that I did have with the room is that you can kind of see all your neighbors, which again, that's sometimes that's difficult not to do. Um, when you are in an ocean front room and you have a balcony. The other issue was the noise that you could hear from the resort in the room. And I knew that going into it, I saw all the reviews. So that's why I upgraded to Exhale Club so that I could have a quieter room. But I'm gonna go over how we resolve that issue later. But you can just hear the music and it goes on from 11 till about 7, 8 at night. Unfortunately, we were not able to change rooms. However, we were able to put on some white noise um, on our phones because I am the type of person who likes to take a nap during the day on my vacation, and that did help drown out the noise. And starting around 8 a.m. in the morning is the tractor cleaning the seaweed, and I commend them for even trying to do that, so um, I'm not complaining because they, I'm sure they feel like they can't win either way. But if you like to sleep in, this could be bothersome to you. I'm an early riser, it didn't affect me, but I thought I would just mention it. I forgot to mention too, they do have a closet here. Forgot to open it up. It has the safe, the ironing board, and robes and places to hang your clothes. One plus about this room is you get 24 hour room service and you do not have to upgrade to the XL Club to get this. The only downside was there wasn't really a good setup to have an eat room service. They had this little um, table they, didn't, they had these two chairs. It was hard to find um, a good place to sit down and eat. Even on the balcony, the table was really too small. But just the fact that you're getting delivered room service to your room, I'll take it any way I get it. But I just thought it was a minor detail that I should mention. 
I need to give a 10 out of 10 though to the housekeeping services. Every single day we came back to an immaculate room and a lot of resorts are getting away from that with COVID and lack of staff, whatever the reason, but our shoes were lined up. The bathroom was spotless. So I feel like the housekeeping staff often gets overlooked. So don't forget to tip them as well. They do have a couple cool features in the room that I forgot to film. One was, I did mention it earlier, this backdrop that changes color. They also have automatic floor light features. So if you're getting up to go to the bathroom, it senses that you're moving and it lights up the room just on the floor, which I found very helpful because sometimes you're walking around the dark. Um, also the speakers, um, they had speakers in the ceiling that went from the TV into the bathroom so you could play music while you were taking a shower or getting ready. One small issue I thought was with the upgrade was the mini bar. Now with the mini fridge, they restock it every single day with what you want. You can even call them. They're going to give you whatever you want. With the mini bar, they give you these two little tiny bottles of alcohol. Now, when we're upgrading, we're used to something like the Sun Palace and the Moon Palace where you have an entire bar in your room. And they do have that little martini bar, which was great too. But if you're thinking you're gonna have this robust mini bar like we've had at other resorts, it's just not the case. A few more positives about the room. One was the air conditioning. The air conditioning worked so well that we actually had to make it warmer sometimes. So I know some people have an issue with that when I'm reading through different reviews and also no sales calls. No one tried to call us on the phone, sell us anything. In fact, I don't, no one tried to sell us anything the entire time we were there, which is very much appreciated. Now, in terms of bugs, you just have to keep the doors closed. So I know um, you're tempted because you're sitting there on the ocean, you want the wind, but you have to keep the screen doors closed. And if you do that, you will not get any mosquitoes or bugs in the room. Overall, there were a lot of positives to this room, which I went over, like the housekeeping staff, the bathroom area, the 24 hour room service and the AC. Um, also the TV, I didn't go over because we don't watch it that much, but they have a nice modern TV. The reason for the eight out of 10, I know people say I complain and nitpick, but part of the review process is to give you all the details is the noise from the pool. So that was bothersome, especially since we were supposed to have a quieter room. Also the lack of privacy on the balcony. You, there were people having phone conversations, so loud conversations, it was hard just to go out there and relax. There was also no bathtub, which I knew going into it, but that's something that some people might like. The sitting room was kind of awkward. There wasn't really conducive to sitting or eating and the mini bar was lacking. Now let's hit the pool and I'm giving the pools, actually I was torn between a 7.5 and an eight out of 10 because there are a lot of positives about the pools, but there are some key issues that would cause me not to want to return to this resort because of it. So let's start with the positives and that is they had two large pools and they were completely different. So one was a party pool and one was an activities pool. So if you didn't want to do the party pool, you could do be at the activity pool and vice versa. They both also had great swim up bars with amazing service and that goes also for the service around the pool. So they had people constantly you know, serving you at the pool, no matter what level, whether you were the XL club level or not. They also had a lot of seating, so pretty much. Um, I did see people get up and reserve seats in the morning, which I think happens at every resort, but for the most part, you could find seating. And they did have a lot of these cool little um, areas in the pool and right outside the pool that you could find if you wanted to gather with friends or just hang out. Now another positive is that they had a lot of activities. They always had something going on. And then we're gonna talk about that party pool later. They had a, a crazy party pool as well, but at the activities pool, they had a ton of games, always something going on. One of the main issues was there was not a quiet pool. So the only quiet pool that they had was over at the Secrets, which was right next door. And you used to be able to use that if you were an Exhale Club member, but you cannot use that anymore, which is one of the issues I'm gonna talk about later that we did not know about. We ended up getting access and being able to use the Secrets Pool, and it really did make a difference. So again, I'm gonna cover all of this at the end of this video. The only other thing I noticed was a lot of the bedding was run down and needed to be replaced that was around the pool. So that was just a side note that made it look a little bit more run down as well. 
Now, another main issue was that the pools were hot, like they were warm, the water was warm. And so it made me question a little bit how clean that they were. And I know, I get it, the Mexican sun is really hot and they have to keep the pools shallow. But I've been to other resorts in the middle of summer where the water was cold. So in order for me to cool off, I actually had to go onto the beach shower and cool off. So that was one thing that was a major issue. Let's talk about that party pool. And listen, I'm a party girl. I'm in my 40s. I still love a good party. I've been to downtown Cancun, Playa de Carmen, Coco Bongo, but this pool took it to a whole new level. So the first day it wasn't as wild. I wouldn't say it was tame, but it definitely was not as wild as day two, which was a little borderline raunchy. And listen, I'm not knocking it. If that's the way you like to party, more power to you. But for me personally, it was just a little too much. And maybe I'm just showing my age or whatever it is, but regardless, there were a ton of people, all different ages, having the time of their life. They absolutely loved it. So it is definitely the right party atmosphere for the certain type of party goer. And honestly, usually I don't like to spend a lot of time at the pool. I prefer to spend time at the beach. So now let's move to the beach so I can show you why we did not spend that much time at the beach. I'm giving the beach a three out of 10. And this is the time of year that this part of Cancun gets a lot of seagrass. And so when we were there, it was particularly bad. I did try to get in. There were some people that got in, um, but it was very rocky. And once I was in the water, I wanted to get right out. I actually knew this going into it. We actually went to this resort because we wanted to write a review. We also got a great deal on unitedvacations.com. So I knew the beach was not going to be that great. It was actually a lot worse than what some of the reviews had said. And I get it, it's mother nature. I get a lot of hate comments about that. Um, if I complain about the beach and it is mother nature, but for someone who has really saved um, their money and vacation time and they want a really beach vacation, it's important for you to know that only two or three months out of the year, the staff said is when it's really clear. And even then for me, I don't think it would be the best beach experience that I like. Now they do try to clean it as much as possible. Um, they have the tractor in the morning and they have people trying to clear it. So that does help um, with it not smelling so bad. So one of the positives is that no one is sitting at the beach. So there's ton of seating. Um, you don't have to fight for seats and there's still great service. They still have service around the beach. The drinks are great. Um, so that is definitely a positive. Now where the resort sits, it's kind of like on this little cove. So um, it's not a long stretch of beach to walk on. You could walk up and down a little bit, but it's not really conducive to a nice long beach walk. Now we met quite a few people who could have cared less about the beach or didn't want to go swimming in the ocean. They were just happy. It being in Mexico or being able to play volleyball on the beach and enjoying the pool scene and the party vibe. And if you follow my channel, you know that the beach is the top priority. And I did know that going into it based on some of the reviews that I read and the videos that I've seen. But again, we came here um, because we wanted to do a review specifically on this property. So I personally would not come back just because of the beach. Even though they say it does get clear a few months of the year, it's just not the type of beach experience that I really look forward to. Time to eat and I'm giving the food a seven and a half out of 10. And I know there were a lot of mixed reviews about the food. And I personally actually thought the food itself was average, even sometimes above average for an all-inclusive resort. Now, remember when I do my reviews, I'm comparing it to other experiences that I've had. So in particular with the food, I've been to the Grand Edmund Palace, which was one of the best food experiences I've ever had at an all-inclusive. So sometimes I find it difficult to rate the food when I'm doing these reviews because I feel like I always have that experience in my mind. So I try to come at it as very objective as possible. And there are actually a lot of great things about the food at this resort. I have to say the first thing is that the food was always very easy to find. There seemed to be food anywhere that you wanted, whether it was the grill at the pool or the buffet or snacks in the Exhale Club. There was never an issue actually finding something to eat. 
So one of my favorite things was the grill by the party pool and also they had a pizza oven by the activity pool because I do love to have pizza sometimes in between lunch and dinner as a snack or sometimes just as lunch and they make it right there and put it into the pizza ovens. At the grill they also had the hamburgers, french fries, onion rings, you know quick bites that were made right on the spot. I also loved the coffee place they had called Nook. Um, not only did I love the decor of it, but I just, the coffee was really good and they did have little pastries there. They had ice cream. Now the place is really small, so it got super packed in the morning. Sometimes the lines were really long, but they did a great job in, um, you know, being fast, trying to get through everybody's order. And again, I was really like the coffee. I also thought the restaurants at night, a few of them were actually pretty good. The last few experiences I've had at different resorts, the restaurants at night have not been that great. So I've, tend, I've had to have a really good breakfast and lunch and then at night just eat light. But the first night we went to the Mexican restaurant and I had read that that was really good and I agree. We had fajitas and um, I think we had tacos I can't really remember. And the service was great and the food was fresh. The only thing I wish that they would have made fresh guacamole. I feel like if you're in Mexico, you know, they should be making it right there on the spot. Now, the following night, we went to the Italian place, and I have to say that we didn't really like anything that we ate there, so that wasn't the best experience. But then the final night, we did go to the steakhouse, and again, I thought it was even a little bit above average. Some of the other places that we have been that cost a lot more money. Now, one thing I did not like with the restaurants at night was that you could not make reservations. I know some people prefer that, but I do not because you have to really plan accordingly. Um, lots of times we had to wait 30 minutes for the steak place, we had to wait an hour. So I definitely prefer some place where you can make reservations. I also was not overly impressed with the buffet, um, the lunch or the breakfast. Again, I'm comparing this to other experiences like the Majestic Elegance and Costa Mujeres had the most insane buffet I've ever had. So some people are gonna to go to the buffet and they're gonna think it's amazing. And in fact, the buffet honestly has probably anything and everything that you could want. A few things they were missing, one was a salad bar. I like to make my own salad. They did have pre-made salads, but not a salad bar. Also would have liked more um, made to order choices like grilled chicken, fajitas. I think they only had a hamburger option in the morning. It was omelets and eggs. And honestly, they did have everything and anything that you probably could want, but it was the only option unless you were the Exhale Club member, which I'm going to talk about in a second. Um, and so I could see if you were staying there for, you know, five, six, seven days, you could get probably sick and tired of um, the same thing every morning. It didn't seem to switch up too much that I noticed. The buffet restaurant was actually really dark as well, borderline depressing, and I get it, you know, it probably keeps it cooler, but one thing that this resort was missing was an Oceanside restaurant. So they kind of had this middle one, the steakhouse, but that was only open at night. And yes, they had the grills that were by the pools and by the ocean, but not a restaurant where you could have breakfast and just overlook the water. Now over at Secrets, which is right next door, they have this great restaurant right on the ocean. And if you're staying at Breathless, you do not have access to Secrets. But if you're staying at Secrets, you do have full access to the Breathless restaurants and resorts. Now, we were able to get access because we had a major issue with our reservation and our upgrade, but it was not the norm. However, just this small experience at Secrets has made me want to go to a Secrets resort that has a really good beach. So if you've been to a Secrets resort that you can recommend, drop them in the comments below because I'm definitely putting it on the list after I've experienced a level of service here. Now what I would recommend is the 24 hour room service and the breakfast. That's the only thing that we tried in room service, but it was actually better than I thought the buffet was. So take advantage of that. Have room service and a tip is to schedule it the night before because if you start ordering that morning it can take over an hour so schedule it the night before they bring it right into your room they set it up and the food was really really good now we didn't make it to the hibachi or the french restaurant but we did speak to some people that did and they said it was okay it was average so i think that was probably the sentiment um, about the restaurants at night overall now if you are an exhale club member you can dine at the a la carte restaurant in the morning for breakfast. And so we did that. And honestly, this was my least favorite experience in terms of food. 
I would have just much rather gone to the buffet um, or had room service. Now for the drinks, I would give it a little bit higher rating, maybe eight, 8.5. They definitely had a wide variety of all different cocktails. They always had the frozen blenders going. Basically anything that you would want, they had. Now, in terms of type of liquor and alcohol, they really did have a wide, wide variety. If you were an Exhale Club member, you could use um, the club and they had a separate bar with more top shelf liquors. The only one issue that I had was I had decided to stick to vodka this trip. And so the highest level that they had in the Excel Club was absolute and it was the same out at the regular. So maybe if I had asked, you know, I really didn't push it too much, they would have brought me a higher end, but I don't think so because, uh, you know, lots of people drink vodka and that was the highest that they had. And that's one of the reasons that people usually want to upgrade to the premium membership or premium club is for the top shelf liquors. But I have to talk about the bartenders and really the service overall, which is a 10 out of 10. And out of all of the places that I've been, the service here really stood out to me more than anything. For instance, if I asked a question like where something was, they didn't just point, they actually escorted me and showed me exactly what it was I was looking for. Now the bartenders, you can tell they work their tail off there. They are constantly from the time that they start to the time they leave just making, making drinks and they are so fast. They may not be interacting that much with the people, but they are just pumping out those drinks, making sure that people don't have to wait so long. In fact, I don't remember having to wait long for anything and I don't mind waiting while I'm on vacation, but even at the restaurant, at the restaurants, the buffet, wherever we were, everyone was very quick. The service was amazing. Just the housekeeping staff alone, I was always blown away every day when I came into my immaculate room, which has not been the case the last couple times at different resorts. So that was impressive as well. And we ended our vacation at the spa, the hydrotherapy. And again, the staff went above and beyond. And we were getting that for free with the Exhale Club membership. So if there's one thing that stood out about this entire experience, it was the service. So much so that even though I wouldn't return back to this resort, I definitely want to go to like a secrets um, someplace else and see if it's the same level of service. Now onto the activities and stick with me. I know this is a long review, but I want to give you as many details as I can and we're almost done. The activities are a nine out of 10. They really do have something going on at all times. When you check in, they give you a full calendar of everything that is going on. But I forgot to tell you to download the app because that's gonna tell you all of the activities, all of the shows, when and where. It also helps you with restaurants, restaurant hours, and the spa. So activities start as early as 10 a.m. and they go through the evening into the night where the shows begin. They do have non-motorized water sports as well, but I did not see many people taking advantage of it because of the condition of the ocean, but some people did, especially the paddle boards, because the water was so calm and the guy would even go out there with you. So during the pool review, I showed you pretty much what happens during the day. They have that party pool, which is off the charts. And then over in the activities pool, they have tons of going on, um, volleyball, ping pong, and they have that activities hut as well. And every night they have a different theme over in the main square. So one night was neon. I think the next night was Mexico. The third night was a mustache party. Then upstairs, they also have a whole area where they do shows. They also have a nightclub. Now, one reason for the nine out of 10 was the nightclub was completely closed when we were there. So they only open it, I think it was Friday, Saturdays, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So the nightclub was not open while we were there. They also had this amazing artist there and they would do portraits. He did a portrait of my cat, but they were also doing this amazing portrait kind of presentation and show over on the side as well. They also had a fitness center and a spa. And the fitness center seemed to have everything that you would need if you like to work out during a vacation, nothing fancy, and then the spa. So I'm actually gonna do a whole other video, I think about the hydrotherapy because it was just one of the best hydrotherapy sessions that we had, but we did do um, 30 minutes of hydrotherapy, which came free with our Exhale Club membership. 
Also took an excursion to Cozumel one day. Now we did not book this through the resort. Um, however, the resort does have an area where you can book excursions and I highly, highly recommend booking an excursion to Cozumel. I'm going to do a whole other video on this because it was that amazing. Go to El Cielo. I've never seen water like that. The whole day was absolutely amazing. Just the overall energy and vibe of this resort was off the charts. So if your number one priority is a place where you can party, have a good time, there's always something going on, then this could be the perfect resort for you. So now it's time for the Exhale Club and whether you should upgrade or not. So we actually upgraded before arriving to the resort. I know some people wait, but we decided to do it before because we wanted the ocean front room and sometimes those sell out. So I called the resort directly and they forwarded me to the front desk, which is something I recommend before going to any resort, is to call the resort directly. And I just simply asked what the options were to upgrade, what it included, and how much it cost. So the first issue was there was some disagreement about what was told to me on that phone call versus what we actually got when we arrived. So the first thing is, and I should know better, I actually tell people to do this and I did not do it, was to write down, anytime you call the resort's front desk, whether it's this one or any other one, write down the person's name, write all of the information down that they're giving you, and if you can even record the call, better. Because this is not the first time that it's happened to us and others where you're having a phone call, you're upgrading, they're telling you what you're gonna get, and then when you get to the resort, it's actually not the case. So they told me it'd be $525. Um, they listed all the amenities, which also include included a quiet pool and a quiet area, which is what, really why we wanted to upgrade because I had read the reviews and I did want a room that was away from the party pool because I do like to relax in my room during the day. And I did want a quieter pool. I love to party, I love to have fun, but I also love the option of that quiet area. Now when we checked in, I definitely should have been more diligent in confirming everything that we were getting. But again, I just assumed that we were paying the upgrade and we were getting what we paid for. And when we did get to our room and we heard the level of noise and I looked out and realized the resort was so small, I figured that no matter where we were, we were going to be able to hear the music. So I didn't wanna go through the trouble of changing the room at that time. But then when we started to walk around the resort and we walked down to the area where the quiet pool was, and I looked up and saw the different rooms, I said, this is actually where our room was supposed to be. It was far enough away from the pool area that you did not hear the noise. So we went back to the Exhale Club, and again, I don't like to complain, but when you do pay this amount of money, you wanna get what you paid for. And so basically what they explained to me is that that is secrets. It's a whole separate resort, and it is not included in what we paid for. And that since I booked through a third party, I probably got wrong information because they changed two years ago from it all being breathless to that part being secrets and some people have not updated their information. However, if you remember, I actually did the upgrade through Breathless itself. So I started feeling a little bit crazy, like did I hear this, did, not, did I not hear this? But then we met another couple, another group of individuals that thought the same exact thing and they also booked through the resort. So it made me feel not so crazy. And actually they took care of the problem right away. They gave us access to the secret side um, for the miscommunication. However, if I did not have that access, I do not think the upgrade would have been worth it for me personally. You did get access to that lounge, which was nice if you wanted you know, that special check-in, which was great and maybe some special liquors, but it didn't really apply to me because it had the same vodka there that it had at the other bars. It did also have a nice bathroom and the snacks, but I really did not use the lounge that much. Now, if the a la carte breakfast restaurant was better, I may have thought it was worth it because I do like an a la carte breakfast, but the room service actually was so much better, so it was not worth it for that in my opinion. Now the hydrotherapy was definitely worth it. One of the best hydrotherapy sessions I've ever had, 
but I found out it's only $35 a person without the upgrade, so I probably just would have paid for it outright. I already talked about the mini bar and the martini bar in the room section, but I definitely don't think it was worth it for that. I would probably just get my own bottle of liquor at the airport, the one that I like, and keep it in the room. And the other amenities um, we did not use. So in conclusion of this long story is that if you're thinking of upgrading, here's what I would do. Again, if I were to return to this resort is for the same cost that I paid to stay at the resort and the upgrade, I probably could have stayed over at the secret side. So that's what I would do in the future because they have their own little lounges, everything there. And then you get access to the breathless side as well. Or if you do not care about being in the quiet area or the quiet pool, I would actually wait to upgrade until I arrived at the resort because sometimes you can negotiate a much better rate depending on their capacity at the resort. Now, if you really want access to that lounge and a special check-in when you arrive, then I would upgrade before arriving. So definitely just call the resort before you arrive and write down the name of the person that you're talking to and all of the details of the conversation. Back in the States, so that means it's time for some final thoughts on the Breathless Riviera Resort and Spa. But first, I forgot to tell you two things, if you can believe it, during that long review. First one is that you do not have to wear wristbands at this resort. And after this trip, I realized I actually prefer that. Um, even though you have to keep track of a key card, when you go off the resort, if you go off the resort like we, like we do, and you're wearing a wristband, it's kind of a target because especially like in Playa de Carmen, they'll come up to you, they'll be like, oh, I was your waiter last night, hola, hola. And they try to lure you in and try to sell you something. And the second thing I forgot to tell you about was the resort credits, and that's because I still have them. I never use them. In fact, I do a whole video about resort credits, why I think they're a scam, and it's no different here. They give you this big book of resort credits, but you can only use them towards certain things, certain denominations, and for instance, a massage is 300 and something dollars, but you can only use $40 of resort credits towards it. So to me, it just wasn't worth it. So getting down to my final thoughts, I personally would not return to this resort for two reasons. One is the beach and two is the pool. Now this time of year, Riviera Maya is known to get a lot of sargassum. So we knew going into it that the beach wasn't that great, but I had thought in my mind, I would spend my time at the pool. But the problem was the pools were so hot, you couldn't even cool off in the pool. So I had to end up taking a shower in the beach shower just to cool off. I'm a water rat, so I like to spend as much time in the water as possible. So this trip, I really didn't spend too much time in the water until I got to Cozumel, which was totally amazing. Definitely recommend going to Cozumel. This resort does check off a lot of the boxes about things I love in a resort. So the first thing was the size. I didn't talk about it uh, when I was going over the room, but yes, we were close to the party pool, but we were close to everything. So I really do love that in a resort. Also, the food was decent, the drinks were decent, and the vibe, there was life, there was energy, there was you know people having fun. I hate a boring resort. And then the service. I mean, the service really is what stood out to me more than anything here. So this resort may be perfect for a certain type of traveler, which is why I do my reviews in categories because what's important to me on vacation may not be what's important to you. So if you like this format, please like and subscribe and keep following us at Three Days and Trace Noches where we keep bringing you honest, to the point, real information about destinations that we travel to. Remember, we're not a travel agency, we're not a travel vlog, just trying to help you have the best vacation possible and show you that you can do it in a really short amount of time.